I know, I know, many of you, before you even continue to watch this video, are probably already going to pause the video and just go in the comments and start talking about it. So, let's get it out of the way first. Let's just talk about one of the big subjects that many are going to want to talk about when it comes to this episode that would probably surprise a hell of a lot of people if you're anime onlys. And I remember when I was reading the manga how shocked I was. It's something you should have expected since it's the same writer of Helsing, but overall though, it just it comes as a surprise because of how it was done. So, the topic of discussion first things first is Hitler. So, a series that's about a bunch of iconic characters throughout the course of history that's being met all in one place, like they're going into this one per, uh, point of time, Hitler is now introduced, which is something we should have all expected. It, it's something that we should have saw coming, but the reason why maybe some of us didn't is because it's such a controversial topic or a character to add into a series. And so seeing Hitler actually having kind of a role in the series is amusing for one reason alone, because this character, he has orchestrated everything that's going on right now and why this empire has expanded so much much is because of what Hitler did. When he was transported to this world, he decided to say, oh, let's attack at all sides, kind of similar to what happened in World War II, and then you had to where all sides were attacked, he was expanding the territory, and eventually he made it to where a bunch of elves and dwarfs and all of them, the different demi-humans, were under his control and under the human control, and they were the top of society. So overall, Hitler was doing, once again, stuff he we know him kind of for in World War II. And then eventually, after all this was said and done, he commits suicide. Now, this is the part that really kind of stands out. Now, I don't know exactly how I feel about this, because it feels rather strange overall if you think about, you know, what really happened. Hitler, from what we can understand from the history of what this empire currently has, is that it has gained a lot of territory, got a lot of control. Hitler was like the father of the country, but then after everything was conquered and all this power was gained, he decides to commit suicide. And that's a question that many are going to be asking, like, why did he do that? Like, I mean, it, it's kind of, you can understand that from the point of view of World War II, of, you know, how Hitler disappeared and he, might, he died or committed suicide. We know... Like, that, that made sense, because, you know, everything was lost. But in this case, Hitler committing suicide after he kind of won, you're like, what's going on here? Is that a way for the writer to let us know that Hitler's not going to have any more of a role in the series to kind of just ride him out? Because, I mean, if you do think about it, it makes sense how the writer handled it. Probably the writer wanted to write Hitler off as quickly as possible for this wouldn't be like, you know, a big character in the future that you would have to write in because many that probably read the series expect maybe Hitler to be a part of it. So maybe the writer quickly wanted to get Hitler off the table for no one else to think about him and think that he's going to be a part of the series from this point onward. But whatever the case may be, though, Hitler has a role in the series. And that alone is just weird and amusing, and some might be a little bit upset with that, but I'm just very curious. How does everyone feel about Hitler having a role in Drifters? I I'm curious. I'm seriously curious on how everyone feels about the mustache to the face, the portrait we saw of him. Like, how does everyone feel about that? Anime only, please let me know in the comments below. I truthfully want to know your thoughts, because I remember my reaction, and now I want to know what yours is, since you now are new to, you know, Drifters. So, with that aside, now that I got that off the table, let's talk about the other stuff. Some, you know, really good stuff when it comes to character development, characterization, and setup for future episodes. So, to dive right into it, let's talk about Toyohisa and Nobunaga's conflict in this episode. It's one of the big, important points of this episode, and what it really goes to show you is how Nobunaga and Toyohisa, they have respect for each other, but they're very different. They're both viewed in different ways. Nobunaga is that type of character that's looked at as if he's a demon, a demon king, someone that is just pure freaking evil. That's kind of the side he represents. And then Toyohisa, he's someone that does some really evil stuff too, but he's looked in more of a brighter light. He's someone that's honorable, prideful, and someone that really cares about everyone else. And so these two are kind of like on different sides of the room. But at the same time though, in this episode, we see how these two kind of show respect to each other. And it's nothing new when we know Nobunaga does respect Toyohisa. We know he does. He's already said 
a couple of lines and makes us see that he does. But one of the big things about this episode is what Nobunaga said. What was going on with all of the humans in this, you know, castle? They were about to be executed. And we know what happened at the end of last week's episode and how this episode carried over. A bunch of the elf women were raped. And this is something that was to be expected if you think about the grand scheme of things. The era that this is set in, to how they were taking women. It was to be expected that the women were probably getting raped and used. And Nobunaga understood this and he was kind of curious why Togyohisa wouldn't understand it. But it's probably because Togyohisa, since he's young, but also he's so one that's always fought in battles that were about honor, he probably didn't expect something like it. But whatever the case may be, though, Nobunaga was legit concerned. Not because he was concerned that Toyohisa would kill someone and have to kill someone and dirty his hands, but it was because he was actually fearful that if Toyohisa was to kill these people that already laid down their arms, he would feel like the reputation or image of Toyohisa would have been ruined. Let me make a brief example, okay? Nobunaga makes it very clear he does not want to be the king. He wants to be the guy that's controlling the stuff behind the scenes, like the puppet master, while he has Toyohisa, the person in the spotlight, someone that is showcased as the main portrait boy. And that's what Toyohisa is. He wants Toyohisa to lead the people, be a king. And so, when you think of a king, like if you think of a king, okay, a good king, you think of someone that has mercy, someone that doesn't slaughter someone when they lay down their arms. That's what you think of a king. Nobunaga, the reason why he wanted to save Toyohisa is because he didn't want his image to be ruined. He didn't want to ruin Toyohisa's image. So he's like, my image is already fucked. I mean, I'm an evil man. I've done a lot of crusty shit in the past. I've been betrayed. I mean, I was almost killed. I mean, I have it to where I'm throwing people's bodies into a freaking shit pit. So, I mean, my image is already fucking ruined, okay? Toyohisa, at the very least, you show respect. You cut off their heads and you wash them and clean them and you make sure that they have some form of peace or grave. Me, on the other hand, if you let me, I'd throw their fucking head in, too. That's kind of how Nobunaga is. So he's the type of guy that already has his image ruined. He's already a guy that's evil, and he doesn't want to be in the spotlight. So he wants to do the shit that Toyohisa can't. And Toyohisa and Nobunaga have that conflict. Nobunaga comes in knocks him out, and then all the people are killed. The reason for this is because he wanted to be the one that had the bad image, and show that Toyohisa shouldn't do something like this, at the very least, kill people that already have laid down their arms. I mean, it also goes against what Toyohisa stands for. We already know this is a, ver a warrior that's honorable. He has a lot of honor, and the way he cares for the dead, it's something to be respected, even if it's an enemy. And overall, the way he, you know, was reacting, it was something that would not have been good overall for his image. So, I like Nobunaga for doing that, and the way to Toyohisa got up and then he punched him, it showed a sign of respect, too. Toyohisa says, no, we're not fighting, we're not arguing. It was kind of like he was rejecting what Nobunaga was saying. He's like, you took a step and you tried to make sure I was fine, where my image wasn't ruined. And I feel like Toyohisa understood that. He understood that Nobunaga actually protected Toyohisa, not from killing someone, but just kind of trampling on his own honor. So yeah, that conflict, very interesting, and leads to a lot of character development and characterization for these characters. So moving on, let's talk about the situation with the dwarfs and also the elves. So as we know, if you think of anything of mythology, folklore, stuff like that, playing games, I think everybody knows by now what elves are usually good at. Usually elves are good at magic, or they're good with the bow. That, that's kind of the big thing that elves have when you think of games or any type of mythology or anything like that when it has to do with something with elves. Usually elves are known for their bows and their high quality magic. And with this episode, we see that the elves are very gifted, but they cannot, you know, really use the sword. They're not good with swords, and they don't really know how to create things. They don't know how to craft stuff, like, for instance, guns. And Nobunaga takes notice of this, that they can't make guns, they can't use blacksmiths to make them. Even though they're really smart, they can't make guns, and they're also not good with the sword. But, they are very good with the bow and can make bows. So it goes to show you that some of the traits of these races carry over from what we know from mythology. For instance, elves good with bows, and if you know anything about dwarves, we know that dwarves are very good with, you know, making things, you know, mining stuff, probably resistant to magic, stuff like that. And so, Nobunaga, if you 
you think about what he's been trying to do, I mean, we know he's been throwing bodies into the shit pile because he's turning them into black powder. And if you're fully aware of what black powder means in history, it means gunpowder. Now, what is gunpowder used for? Obviously, guns. He wants to make guns. So, he needs the dwarfs. So, if you think about what's going on here, the three main characters and all that, the three main characters that are leading the charge on the drifters, they're each going to have probably their own squad. You're going to have it to where, you know, the elves are with one, Nobunaga is getting, you know, the dwarves, and Mito Yohisa, he might get, you know, some human squad or something else. What I'm getting at is, is that each individual might get their own demi-human race under their command, and since Nobunaga is the type of person that likes guns and, you know, making black powder, it makes sense that the dwarves would be under his command, so when they are finally introduced, you know that's gonna be pretty fucking badass. This man's probably gonna be going to town seeing how the dwarves gonna be making this man some guns. So, yeah, Nobunaga, he needs to wait till the dwarves until his plan is enacted, and that's kind of the setup for that. Let's talk about the next character that was introduced in this episode, Count Saint Jeremy. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Now, if I am not saying that right, please forgive me. So, the Count Saint that was introduced in this episode, at the time when I was, you know, reading Drifters, I wasn't a JoJo fan. I I've never actually read JoJo at the time when I first got into Drifters, like, many years ago. And now, after catching up with JoJo, you know, reading or watching the actual, you know, anime... I now see that this character that was introduced in this episode reminds me a hell of a lot of some JoJo characters you would see. And I mean, like, the, the way the two characters are behind the Count Saint, the way they look like they're posing, the way he looks like he's posing, it just overall, that reminded me a lot of JoJo, and hopefully I wasn't the only one that got that impression that they reminded me of JoJo characters, like the menacing and stuff, the way they, you know, just kind of carried themselves throughout the episode. Am I the only one that believed that they looked like JoJo characters? Please let me know your honest thoughts in the comments below. So, yeah, we got a lot of introduction. This character's gonna be joining Nobunaga's side and Toyohisa's side and all that. So, yeah, well, just a big setup episode for a big fight that's gonna be happening soon because we do know that the Black King's army is coming over to the Drifters according to the ending of the episode. So, let me know your honest thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.